Hello everyone, welcome. Today we have a very special video, our annual room tour. In this video, we'll give you a full list of every species we kept under our care as of 2024. This is part two of two. In this video, you'll see sugar ants, big headed ants, trap ants, meat ants, and more. Before we start, yes, this video will release after the new year. This is due to some production issues with part one, which pushed this video back. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. To start, we have the Campanotus nigriceps, one of the many large sugar ant species. This species is also very successful. Unlike most species, they are far more suited to living in urban and suburban areas. This species may not have the most unique colours, although they make up for this with their brightly coloured queens. While most other species have a plain, monocoloured queen and vibrant coloured workers, like the Campanotus suffusus, Campanotus nigriceps and a few others have queens that are full of colour. Here we have one of the largest species of sugar ant in Australia, the Campanotus intrepidus. These ants are large and extremely powerful. The super mages can be over 2 centimeters in length and are strong enough to cut through flesh, as one of our mates found out the hard way. Our queen currently has a pile of cocoons and should have workers within a week or so. This is a less well-known species, the Campanotus ephiphium. We got this small colony from Navoants, another ant YouTuber. This small colony has about 7 workers and a small pile of brood. This species is very easy to keep, not being fussy at all, eating basically any food source given to them. Next up is Campanotus clarapes. We acquired this species for the first time last year. Despite there being a lot of queens during the nuptial flight, we had never managed to acquire one. This is because most sugar ants of this size and larger fly on warm spring or summer nights. However, this species flew all the way back in April. This species has slender workers which are a shiny black with pale legs. This is a Campanotus nigerianus. We originally thought that they were just clarapes as the queens are almost identical. We only realized that it was a different species once the workers had hatched. They are an uncommon species in our area, only occasionally seeing workers forage during the day, so it was strange that they flew at night. This is a Campanotus consobrinus. It is probably the most well-known sugar ant in Australia, as they can be found anywhere and everywhere, from their bright colors to their quick growth speed. If they live near you, you will know about it. Our colony is doing quite well with around 10 workers and lots of brood. This is Campanotus launi, another nocturnal flyer. They are much smaller than most of the Campanotus on our list, with the nanetic workers only being around 5mm in length. Their queen is very skittish, and when we take off the cotton ball to feed them, she bolts for the entrance, while her workers remain rather calm. I usually find the opposite, where the workers would panic and the queen would remain docile. We are still not sure what species this tiny black sugar ant is. However, it is a very unique one. The worker has a large arch on its forax, which is something very few species of Campanotus have. Additionally, the worker is only around 4mm, which makes it hard to get good quality photos for trying to identify it. This is Campanotus suffusus, an extremely vibrant species. The queen may seem dull, but their workers are stunning. They have a metallic golden abdomen, and in certain subspecies, they can even have orange to red legs. This species almost exclusively resides in dry eucalypt forests, away from civilization which makes finding their queens quite challenging, making it even more exciting to try and raise a colony.
Next up, we have another golden species, the Campanotus aniopelosus. This species is not near as large as the last few, being around 1.5 centimeters at the largest. This species also lacks the giant supermajors seen in most other Campanotus species. But other than that, they are still quite interesting, with the worker's metallic golden abdomen. Here is a small colony of Campanotus humula. They are on the smaller side of Campanotus, with the workers only being around 8mm in length. These pale ants are quite common around here, probably being the most successful Campanotus species in our area. Here we have one of the most sought after Australian species, the Fidoli antipodum. You may remember this queen from her last appearance in our rare ants video. From then, she's done really well, recently welcoming her first generation of workers, and there are still many more on the way. Despite this queen's large size, her workers are tiny, only being a millimetre or two in length. The reason for this is so the queen can lay hundreds of eggs at a time, which greatly speeds up the growth of the species, compared to other Fidoli. This is a small colony of Fidoli boss. This species is capable of having giant supermajors with enormous swollen heads packed with muscle. Our colony is still small and they don't have any majors yet, but if we continue to feed them lots of protein, we should see the first ones soon. Here we have Fidoli Vigilance. This is the largest Fidoli colony we own, having around 100 workers and 7 majors. This species is very dominant. In the wild, they usually are the first to any dead insect or fallen nuts. Here you can see them swarming a cricket. The majors stand guard while the smaller workers go in and harvest from the food source. This is a colony of an undescribed Odontomachus species, found in the Western Australian desert. They are giants, measuring in at 1.5 centimetres. They are still a founding colony though, and when they go out to forage, all three members leave the nest to hunt, including the queen. They hunt soft-bodied insects. Here you can see them hunting termites. They use their powerful jaws to crush prey. They are able to slam them shut at 233 km per hour. And if that wasn't enough, they go in with their potent sting. With this speed, they have the ability to launch themselves backwards and out of danger. This is our colony of Prolasius hemiflavus. This little colony currently has around 8 small black workers. Despite the worker's dull coloration, the queen's head and thorax is a beautiful bright orange. This is our Iridomamex queen. And this is her empire. They are one of the largest colonies in our collection, reaching over 1,000 workers and a ton of brood. Due to their great size, they are a massive pain to work with. Each time we open their setup, there are swarms of soldiers attempting to escape. This colony will eat practically anything, but their favourite food is jelly. As soon as we put in a new cup, they swarm, completely covering the surface. Here we have a much larger species, the Iridomomax purpurus. To show you guys, here is a size comparison between a standard sized Iridomomax and the purpurus. You can really see that it dwarfs the smaller species. This species is highly prolific, growing at around the same rate, if not faster, than their smaller counterparts. On top of this, they eat lots, devouring anything they are given within mere minutes. They are definitely a brilliant species. This is a colony of Aphanagaster pilfer. This colony has really started to pick up on their growth recently, getting to around 30 workers. Despite their higher numbers, every time they are checked on, they start to panic, and then start evacuating their tube. Hopefully, as the colony continues to get larger, they'll calm down a bit. Here we have an Aphanagaster longiceps queen. She is massive. This is her next to the other Aphanagaster species of which she dwarfs. Much like the antipodum, the reason for her large size is to maximize egg production. 
only a few minutes after we got her back from the ant hunt, we found this queen had already laid a batch of eggs. Here we have a species of Chelina. This striking queen has got a large batch of larvae and pupae, which are due to a close quite soon. Hopefully, the workers will have the same orange abdomen coloration as the queen. This shiny red and black species is Chromatogaster laviceps. This is the most successful species of Chromatogaster in our area. There is a nest of these beauties in almost every tree. Because of this, they are the only arboreal Chromatogaster species near us, driving all the others, such as Chromatogaster rufotestacea, to live exclusively underground. This is a small colony of Chromatogaster. We got these girls from a mate of ours in Queensland, and I'm glad we did. While the workers of this colony are a plain brown to beige, the queen sports a beautiful, vibrant orange abdomen. These chubby little ants are Moranoplus minor. These ants are very cute, with their stubby little bodies and bright orange abdomens. This species is also very polygynous, being able to tolerate tens of queens in their colonies. Our colony has three queens and a lot of workers, that have a huge appetite, devouring any honey or insect part dropped into their outworld. This colourful queen is a Colobopsis macrocephala. This species is one that primarily lives in wood. They make relatively small colonies compared to their Campanotus relatives, and much more concealed ones as well. Despite finding so many queens, I've never seen a nest in the wild. This rare species is Colobopsis gasseri. Since her last appearance on the channel, she has done really well, breaking off her wings and laying a small batch of eggs. This species is stunning, with its black coloration being countered by its white abdomen patterning. They also live in wood, tunneling into branches and tree trunks. This quirky species is Frogatella kirabi. These ants are bright red. The queens also sport a metallic silver band on their abdomen. The workers are very unique, as their heads are a triangular shape as opposed to most other ants' circular shaped heads. This is our colony of Solenopsis frogati. Most species that come from the genus Solenopsis would be invasive, but not these tiny ants. They are one of the few native species. This colony is very difficult to care for due to the worker's tiny size. They easily get stuck in any sugar source we give them, and most insect body parts we feed them go ignored. Next is the species that we have had for quite a while but never shown on YouTube, the Mesopanera australis. This species specializes in hunting termites performing raids on them by tunneling into their nest and killing the workers for nourishment. This species is subterranean, primarily living underground, only very rarely surfacing. Their queens are usually found under rocks next to termite nests, like this one was. We've been feeding her termites, which the queen equally takes to feed to her growing larvae. This is a Brachypanera, a subterranean species that forms large colonies up to tens of thousands of individuals. With their queens being so much larger than the workers, they are able to quickly build their great colonies. Our queen isn't doing all that well though, only having a small scattered batch of eggs. And there you have it, our 2024 room tour. I hope you enjoyed learning and observing all the unique species in our diverse collection. If you haven't already seen part 1, there'll be a link to it in the description of this video. Once again, this video required a lot of work to produce, and we really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave feedback in the comments. Until next time, have a good one.